everybody. How are you? Hold on, I'm trying to get situated out here so you can see me. Hi, welcome. How is everybody doing? And I probably caught you off guard. It's Friday. I usually come on Thursdays. Um, but I had a few things that came up at work yesterday, so I couldn't uh, make it onto Periscope. But here I am today. Hello, everyone who's joining. And hello to all replay viewers. Thank you for doing that, for replaying and watching. My name is Elizabeth Willett, Senior Fertility Herbalist with the Natural Fertility Company. Hi. Uh, it is beautiful where I am today. Yeah, the sun just came out really, really bright. <laughs> um, Again, I'm Elizabeth Willett, Senior Fertility Herbalist with the Natural Fertility Company. I am, um, we are the naturalfertilityshop.com and naturalfertilityinfo.com. Um, please let me know if you can't hear me well enough. I've tried to adjust my speaker, um, but I, I think that you probably all can so far. So anyway, today we're going to talk about sleep and hormones and fertility. Um, I am going on night four of disrupted sleep. Uh, it's really hard. I understand completely if you're in the same place as I am um, and I wanted to talk more about it because sleep can disrupt hormonal imbalance that is a truth it can happen um, and if you're battling infertility and you're struggling to conceive and you're struggling with hormonal imbalance and not sleeping well that there could be a connection there um, obviously there might be other things going on too but sleep can be a contributing factor as well so let's talk a little bit more about it so we know that disrupted sleep patterns that means not getting a solid seven to nine roughly hours of sleep a night. Um, you're gonna read from different sources that that time frame um, could be different. Most people need on average about seven hours of sleep, straight sleep a night. Um, I think we've been kind of trained to know that it's eight, but um, I've read a lot of my resources say seven to nine hours of sleep a night. Um, so disrupted means that you're not getting that solid um, seven to nine hours a night. But we know that disrupted sleep patterns do affect hormonal balance. Um, they affect basal body temperature. If you're charting for, to track ovulation and you consistently have low basal body temperatures and you're not sleeping well, that could be a contributing factor. There could be a connection there. And it can also suppress ovulation. So if you're not sleeping well at night and repeatedly not sleeping well at night and you're repeatedly not ovulating, there could be a connection there as well. Sleep affects hormones including estrogen, progesterone, LH, which is luteinizing hormone, and FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. You guys know all of these. But there's one major hormone that ha there's a connection between sleep and this hormone, and you may not have heard of it before, or you may have heard of it connected to something different. And that's leptin. Leptin is, dir is connected directly to ovulation. And when you have disrupted sleep patterns, um, the body isn't able to produce leptin properly and that can therefore suppress ovulation and impact hormone balance and in turn make your cycle irregular because when we're not ovulating our cycles our um, hormones aren't produced in the way that we need them for our cycles to be regular. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the hormone leptin. Most people know it in relation to body fat and sati satiation, satiety, I don't know how to say that the best or the right way, but the, your fullness, the amount of how you feel full um, when you eat. And um, I believe there's also a connection to insulin sensitive, your insulin regulation in the body. But it also is involved in ovulation, and that's the hormone that um, when we don't sleep properly isn't produced properly. So anyway, we need regular, consistently regular amounts of sleep to produce leptin so that we are um, ovulating and to also properly produce the rest of the hormones that we need to have a regular cycle. That is in a nutshell um, how sleep impacts hormonal balance and can be contributing to your irregular cycles or anovulation or um, um, hormonal imbalance. So what do you do about it? Um, you know, we all know that when we sleep, our body is working to repair itself. Um, it's taking time to detoxify, regulate hormones, repair, correct any chemical imbalances, adjust blood, blood sugar levels to that um, point of homeostasis to a point where they're healthy, and store and manage memories. Um, it's important to, throughout your day, work to get some sunlight be out when it's light if you can be and be in and try to be more calm when it's dark if you can be now i know that there are people who work night shifts and people whose lifestyles don't um, because of their work or 
because of uh, any number of reasons that don't allow them to be out in the day a lot of the time. But try to be out in the light when it's light and in in the dark when it's dark. Train your body uh, in that way. Make sure you're exercising regularly. Um, that's very important for a number of reasons. I'm not going to go into that in this periscope, but I think you probably all know that. Um, what else do we need to be doing? Managing stress. Particularly if your stress is something that makes your mind race and makes you think, think, think a lot. And if you're waking in the middle of the night because of all of your thoughts or your to-do lists or your racing mind. Um, but manage stress overall. Uh, that's important. Um, avoid stimulus too close to bed. Um, it is true that we need to be logging off of our phones, our mobile devices, our computers, turning off the TV, turning down the lights for a while before bed. Um, I've read that some people say one to two hours before bed, but I find that I can decompress in about a half an hour. Um, so find your happy place, but you need to be logging off before bed. Um, one of the most detrimental things to consistent sleep is actually laying in bed and trying to fall asleep to your phone or the TV. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna preach anymore on that, but um, you have to find what works for you, I guess. But it's important to consider at least a logging off um, with plenty of time before bed. Um, what else can we do? Um, other stimulants can be things like caffeine. For some people, it's food. Uh, for some people, it might be exercise. So make sure that you're not doing the things that really work you up um, too close to bedtime. Taking supplements that boost energy levels, like maca, for example, that's something not to be taken too close to bedtime. Um, and create a, uh, a sleep routine. Um, you know, we hear about parents doing that, parents with little kids who do that, but it's really important as adults um, to do that as well. Any sort of sleep routine. Um, you know, obviously log off. Do you like to journal? It might be a good time to journal. It might be a good time to meditate. Uh, it might be a good time to try to do some gentle stretching or some more relaxing, calming yoga poses. Um, your sleep routine could involve tea, herbal teas that are, um, you know, helpful for relaxation and maybe contain some nervines or some herbs that tend to be a tad more sedative. It could involve herbs that do that, chamomile, um, lavender, passionflower, valerian works for some people. It doesn't work for me. Valerian's a stimulant, so um, that might be one to try a little bit of first. Uh, milky oats, um, hops, not beer. <laughs> Um, for some people, beer and alcohol sends them into that I'm crazy, I can do anything mode, and other people, um, it's more sedative, but I'm talking about hops used medicinally. Um, what else? Magnesium. Magnesium is really important, especially if your sleep is disrupted from something like restless leg or you can't get comfortable and you're constantly twitching or itching or, you know, just not able to find a comfy spot in bed. Uh, you might want to learn more about magnesium. Um, there are magnesium lotions you can apply. I have one. Um, I had a whole entire box of props to bring out and show you the things that I use and I left it in my office when I came outside. Darn it. Um, but there is a magnesium melatonin lotion that would be super simple to sit by your bed and put on if you wake up in the middle of the night. Um, there's homeopathic magnesium. You can get magnesium supplements. Magnesium glycinate or chelated magnesium is found to be best. Uh, melatonin, perhaps. That's one to learn more about. Um, I wouldn't suggest just jumping in and starting to take melatonin without understanding how it works and um, how to take it properly. Um, there are some other things like rescue remedy if it's stress and anxiety or if, you're, you know, if it's things that are weighing on your heart that are keeping you awake at night. Um, there are mindfulness meditations. Circle and Bloom has a mindfulness meditation. I think it's sleeping peacefully or blissfully. Um, but if you're interested in trying something like that, you could um, contact or go to Circle and Bloom's website. Um, coloring. Uh, I, I'm sure you've all seen and heard of these, um, you know, these mindfulness-based coloring books, adult coloring books. You could keep a coloring book um, near your bedside and some color pencils and color before bed or if you wake in the middle of the night. And that's another thing I wanted to touch on. Um, I personally can fall asleep super easy um, almost anywhere. Our couch in our living room is ambient for me. Uh, I fall asleep every time I sit on it. 
but I wake in the middle of the night. I'm a light sleeper. I hear everything that goes on in our neighborhood. I hear the dogs. I hear my children. Some of you know I have children. Um, uh, I hear my husband. I hear flies on the windowsill. I hear the crickets outside. I hear everything. It's nuts. So I'm constantly waking throughout the night. So what I've had to do is find some things that I can do while I'm awake because I found that when I wake in the night, if I lay and think about how I'm awake and how I shouldn't be awake, I should be sleeping, I get more worked up. And that's just, so I have a coloring book that I have on my bed stand. I have that magnesium lotion I was talking about. Um, I have a shirt I can throw over my bedside lamp so the light is diffused. Uh, you could consider something like a Himalayan rock salt lamp or um, uh, something like that, some sort of soft light to turn on. Because when you're laying there awake and you're beating yourself and you're getting more worked up, that's counterproductive. It's not going to be as easy to fall asleep. So try when you can to actually wake up, sit up in bed, and do something. Color, meditate, um, try some pressure points, maybe do some gentle stretches, read a book, a mindless book, something that's not going to really make your mind real and think, 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 you know, some, some sort of fun reading, something like that. But don't lay and beat yourself up in the middle of the night that you're awake because that's counterproductive. Um, sleep masks might help. White noise machines might help. I mean, I'm giving you tons and tons and tons of things to, to, um, to tools for your toolbox, your sleep toolbox. But ultimately what it's going to take is just spending some time finding things that work for you. Um, because some of the things I enjoy, you might not, they might drive you nuts in the middle of the night or before bedtime. But again, know that sleep is connected to hormonal balance. Um, that it's one more thing to think about if you're not finding anything else seemingly going on, but yet you're still battling, trying to conceive or battling a hormonal imbalance. If you know you don't sleep well, um, you're chronically not sleeping through the night, like I have this week, five days of being up for hours in the middle of the night, um, you maybe then can just keep that in mind when your menstrual cycle starts or if it's different, um, if it happens to have shifted for for this month, it could be related to that, those few nights of not sleeping well. So if you want some more information or want me to type out these tips that I have for you, I certainly can do that in, um, as we wait for this video to post on YouTube. Um, you can certainly replay this Periscope, but we have some information and can get you some tools for supporting healthy sleep on your journey. Um, I hope this was helpful. I can uh, spend a few minutes taking questions and comments. I saw a few um, posts. If you want to repost, you're welcome to do that. Um, how is everyone doing? Are you sleeping? <laughs> we don't sell the magnesium cream. It's not our product and we're not affiliated with the company. Um, if you want to email me, I'll give you the name. You can research it and see if it might be worth um, purchasing or trying. Um, you can go to naturalfertilityshop.com or naturalfertilityinfo.com and um, click the contact us buttons and send me an email, I'll get you the information. Um, disruption, uh, defining sleep disruption is, um, is if you cannot fall asleep, if you really, really struggle to fall asleep, but then you do in sleep through the night, that could be disrupted sleep. If you fall asleep easily like I do, but you wake several times on and off throughout the night or for one big chump, chunk throughout the night, that could be disrupted sleep. Anything that wakes you repeatedly in the middle of the night. If you're not feeling rested when you wake, most likely um, your sleep was disrupted. All of those things is what disrupted can mean. Someone asked to define disruption. Um, it's going to be a little different for all of us probably. Something else I just thought of. Um, for your sleep routine, uh, try to remove the things that disrupt your sleep from your room. Um, for me, it can be dogs. So if, if and when they're not sleeping in my room, it really helps. Um, uh, some people's husbands snores or partners snore. They're not as easy to remove, so you have to just you know tread lightly there. But um, someone mentioned something about their period being gone for a very long time and then returning, but now it's spotting. Um, I guess that's fabulous. Congrats. I um, Did you have a question about that or, or something else you wanted support with? Yeah, I definitely feel that I also sleep poor when I have a poor meal, when I have a really, really rich meal, when I'm super full, when I eat too much. Um, if I eat really bad, 
I do feel it as well. Um, some people can eat closer to bedtime and they're fine. Other people can't. Um, sometimes even when I have a small treat before bed, sugar, like a little ice cream or something, a little dark chocolate, I feel a little crazy before bed. So um, now that you know that about your meals, you can hopefully eat farther ahead of bedtime or try to include something a little bit healthier to help. Yeah, diet can play a role too, for sure. Yeah. What else? Does anyone else have any more comments or questions? I'm trying not to super squint. But it's bright. <laughs> Everyone's being quiet. All right. Well, I think that I'll close for today. Thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you can sleep really, really well tonight, or at least find some tools to have on hand to help you go back to sleep if you wake in the middle of the night, or to help you create a sleep environment that is more conducive to that seven to nine hours straight every night. And if you want more support in terms of um, the tools that I mentioned here, please send us an email or contact us. Um, you're welcome. Thanks for joining me. And um, you know how to reach us if you need us with any other comments or questions. Have a fabulous weekend. We'll see you next next week. I, w I may not be here, just FYI, but um, I might come on on Friday really quickly. We'll see if I can fit it in. But anyway, we'll see you soon. All right. Bye.